Hey, welcome here. My name is Andrew Clark. I'm a guitar player, producer, and songwriter from Vancouver, Canada. And today I wanna to take you with me while I rebuild my pedal board. It was about 2013, 2012 when I first built a pedal board. And at the time I was coming out of the whole praise and worship scene into a rock band where I didn't really need a ton of effects. So I bought a fuzz pedal and a distortion pedal and an overdrive pedal and that was about it. And that's what I used for a while there. But as my tasks kind of changed with the type of music I played, uh, my pedal board didn't really. I kind of just would throw stuff on there that would do the job, um, but not do the job that well or particularly well. So what I wanted to do now, finally, is build something that fit all of the roles that I need a pedal board to fill. So I play in a country band. I also play music under my own name, which is its own kind of totally different genre from country. It's very indie. And then I also do session stuff, so I need something that can be very flexible. What's important to me is that I don't use a lot of pedals. I don't like big pedal boards. I don't like too many buttons. Um, I don't like switchers. Nowadays, you go on Instagram and you see these crazy boards that use MIDI switching and they've got 15, 20 pedals on them. Um, a lot of times they don't even use an amplifier, which is crazy to me. And that's not me, that's not what I want. I want something that really just feels like an extension of my amplifier because I love my amplifier. It sounds great to me. I've just, it feels like me. And I don't want pedals that make it not feel like me and not feel like the sound I wanna hear in my ears. So I always am gravitating towards pedals and sounds that complement my amplifier rather than change the sound. The first kind of two upgrades that I decided to invest in were both from Universal Audio, and that's the Golden Reverberator, and the Starlight. Um, I sold off an El Capistan and a Big Sky, which I never really connected to either of them, but to be able to kind of fund these purchases, um, they both sound amazing. With that, I needed to also update my power supply, so I ended up going with the True Tone CS12, the One Spot Pro and it looks like it's gonna do the job great. I also got new cables from Evidence Audio. My current cables, it's probably my fault, but they cut out all the time. It's very frustrating. I'm having to bend down and all of a sudden I've got a dead cable, trying to fix it mid gig, very frustrating. So new cables and with that also a buffer because I've never used one. I don't know if it's gonna make a massive difference or not because I do usually have an always on pedal, but we're gonna do it because that's what we're supposed to do and what everybody says we're supposed to do. Um, the last point I wanna make is just about what I'm building this rig around and that is the Analog Man King of Tone. I got this pedal 2013 when the wait list was about 12 months. Uh, so I didn't pay a lot for it and I just waited for it and my name came up. It has never ever left my side since. It is my favorite pedal of all time. It almost never gets turned off. It just always sounds amazing. Nowadays, I know it's crazy for your wait time or whatever it is, or you go on reverb and spend way too much on it. Um, is it worth it? That's a question for another video. But I love mine and mine will be kind of the central point of this whole build. Um, with that being said, let's clear off my desk and get into the pedal board build. All right, so the first step was to remove the old power supply from underneath the board and mount the new one. I'm using a 10 year old pedal train junior and it definitely needed to be cleaned up. It was pretty dirty. I set up a temporary mount for the buffer underneath the board, but I think I'm probably gonna have to mount that properly later. I placed all the pedals on the board just to double check the layout and make sure that everything was gonna fit properly. Then I got to building cables. The Evidence Audio cables were really easy to build and I actually got the hang of it pretty quickly. You might notice that I was using gloves while building these cables. The only reason is just that my hands get pretty sweaty sometimes and it kind of made it challenging to screw in the ends. And then it was just about getting everything nicely aligned as I built each cable. I left some extra length on most of the cables just in case I wanted to swap something out that had top jacks or side jacks. Then I just needed to run the power cables and plug all those in. And boom, there you have it. Just needs a little bit of cable management. All right, now that the pedal board is done, I've gone ahead and grabbed my Strat, which is the guitar that I use for 99% of the music that I play. And then we're gonna take a little listen to some of the sounds that I'm getting from this new pedal board. Uh, the amplifier I use is a Dr. Z Easy G 50. 
Um, it's a 50 watt black face kind of super reverb type thing. Pedal board is plugged right directly into it. There's no effects loop or anything like that. And yeah, so far everything is bypassed, which is how we'll start. And this is the sound. Super clean. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So the very first pedal that we're going into is the buffer um, underneath. And from there it goes into the Sonic Research Turbo Tuner. And then from there we go into the Origin Effects Kali 76. And uh, this pedal, I use it kind of as a sweetener. So whatever genre I'm playing, it, it actually stays on all the time, especially with this Strat. Um, so it sounds like this. So from the Kali 76, we go into the XTS Imperial. Uh, this is a pedal not a lot of people know about. Um, it's based on a Nobles ODR one. I'm gonna leave the Kali 76 on because that's how I like to run it. So out of there we go into the King of Tone. Uh, the King of Tone obviously uh, doesn't really need much of an introduction. All the dip switches inside are normal, so the right side's overdrive, the left side is the clean boost. But yeah, so here is the overdrive side and what it sounds like. <laughs> pickup. Uh, then we go into the uh, left side of the KOT. Alright, and then out of that we go into the Rockaway Archer, which is basically just a Klon clone. Um, I've had the regular Archer from J Rocket, and I've always loved it. Um, the problem I always had with it just was that uh, there's almost like too much low end, and I always used it just as a clean boost. I know that the magic in the Klon is once you start turning the gain up, but for me, the way I like to use it personally is with the gain all the way down, um, and just use it as a boost. Um, I can stack it with any of the other drive sections, whether that's the clean side of the KOT, the dirty side, or the uh, Imperial. And because of how tweakable the EQ is, the frequencies don't really get away from me and I'm able to actually shape a pretty good lead tone. So if you want to hear it by itself, But yeah, like I said, I like to stack it. So if we have, let's say, the OD side of the King of Tone, and we have something like this. Um... 
So it's got a lot more attack, a lot more bite. Um, it doesn't sound great out of the mix because it's a little bit shrill, but taking off some of that bottom end and bumping up those mids. Now I think, I think it's about 801.6 is where those are, are kind of pushing up at. That just adds some clarity. And especially like I said, in a mix, it really makes your solo stand out. So I'll show you what it sounds like stacked up with the other drives as well. Okay, so from there we go into uh, the flint. Now the flint was my primary reverb for a really long time uh, until I eventually replaced it, but I still love the tremolo on the Strymon and especially for uh, for country music, which is what I spend the majority of my time doing, uh, that trem is just the perfect pedal for that. And I can switch that out for, for something else when I'm doing a different type of gig, but for country stuff, keeps it easy with the trim uh, and it just sounds awesome. So I'll put a drive on, I'll pretty much keep a drive on all the time when we're testing this stuff. And let's take a listen, very simple. Uh, you kind of get this type of thing. So yeah, so that's that's pretty much it for the tremolo. From there, we go into the uh, starlight, uh, and it sounds like this. So like that, it mixes just beautifully with the spring reverb. And that's usually how I keep it. I keep a little bit of modulation on there. Um, I do have a preset set up. And I don't use this very often. Um, but if I do need another sound, I'll use this, which is basically the same sound. It's just set to a dotted eighth. And it is, uh, the mix is set higher and the feedback is set higher. <laughs> And then lastly, we have uh, the golden. So the golden, I there's a million settings that I absolutely love with it and it sounds amazing. Uh, but the main sounds that I use are this one, which is just a nice, simple spring. Same thing without it. doesn't sound quite the same. So, uh, and then the other setting I use is basically the same setting, but it's just set uh, longer with the mix higher. Um, and I use the ambient spring, which is setting C rather than the smooth spring, which is I, what I use for the quieter um, spring reverb. And it sounds like this. And it sounds particularly great stacked up with uh, the delay and the trim. All right, that's all I got for you. If you have any questions, 
about uh, what we talked about today, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, more importantly, if this is not your perfect pedal board, uh, please let me know what, what, what would you change? What would you do to make the pedal board better or more you? I'd really like to know. And if you want, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's Andrew Clark Music, uh, just spelled exactly like my name. And you can message me there. Um, I'd be happy to chat guitars or whatever with you. I'm usually pretty quick to respond there. So yeah, thank you so much. Uh, please like the video, subscribe if you are interested in more content like this. I have a lot more planned, a lot more coming down the pipeline. And yeah, thank you so much for spending some time with me. It honestly means so much to me. So thank you, and I will uh, see you in the next one.